In this section of the program, we are going to be talking about en route performance. When we talk about en route performance, we mean everything between takeoff and approach and landing. For example, we will talk about selecting the best cruise altitude. Then we will discuss the performance of the airplane in en route climb, including the climb speeds and the time, fuel, and distance for climb to the cruise altitude. We will discuss the cruise portion of the flight, both for all engines operating and for an engine inoperative. Finally, we will discuss descent and holding. It is not the intent of this module to show you how to use the tables in the operations manual or the quick reference handbook to compute your airplane's performance. Rather, it is our intent to discuss these en route topics in general terms. Where relevant, we are also going to show you how the airplane's onboard computer can help you obtain the flight data you need. On a modern-day high-tech airplane, the crew workload is reduced and operating efficiency is enhanced by the Flight Management Computer, FMC. In addition to navigation information, the FMC provides a number of en route performance functions, including climb data, cruise data, altitude selection data, and data for descent and holding. We are going to show you the relevant FMC displays as we discuss each en route phase of flight. On most airplanes, the FMC is not required for dispatch. However, if the airplane is dispatched with the FMC inoperative or the FMC performance functions are lost during flight, the pilot can revert to using the performance data in the performance in-flight section of the Quick Reference Handbook, QRH. This section contains the performance information normally supplied by the FMC, such as the engine thrust setting, cruise data, altitude capability, landing reference speeds, and so on. Before we start looking at the en route phases of flight, let's spend a little more time talking about the FMC and how it is used to enhance efficiency and safety. The FMC contains an aerodynamic database that describes the characteristics of the airplane and an engine database that describes the characteristics of the engine. Those two parts form the airplane performance database. If your company tracks airplane performance and knows how its airplanes compare to the Boeing performance database, your maintenance department can make adjustments to drag and fuel flow factors that are entered on the Perf Factors page. These factors make it possible to adjust the performance calculations of the FMC to match the individual performance of any specific airplane. The FMC uses this airplane and engine data to compute and display a wide variety of performance information to the flight crew. Every time you initialize the FMC before flight, you must input cost index. The FMC will use the cost index to compute the most economical climb, cruise, and descent speeds for the scheduled flight when operating in economy mode. For the airline to determine the cost index, it must first determine the factors that affect the total cost of each flight. The factors which affect the cost of a flight can be broken into time-related costs, fuel costs, and fixed costs. Fixed costs are any costs which do not vary with flight time or fuel burn, and therefore are not included in the calculation of cost index. Time-related costs are any cost which will be reduced by reducing the flight time. This reduction in flight time is accomplished by flying faster climb, cruise, and descent speeds. Simply put, the faster you fly, the lower the time-related costs. Part of the maintenance cost is time-related. For some airlines, Flight crew and cabin crew costs are also time-related. 
Fuel costs are also dependent on the chosen flight speed in this manner. There is an optimum speed that can be flown which will minimize the trip fuel and therefore minimize the fuel cost for that flight. This speed is determined by the aerodynamic and engine characteristics of the airplane. The total cost is the cost of fuel plus the cost of time. The goal for an airplane is to minimize the total cost of the flight. The speed which results in the lowest total cost is the most economical speed for the flight. This speed is called econ speed. Cost index is simply the parameter entered into the FMC, so it can calculate the econ speeds for climb, cruise, and descent. If your airline has low time-related cost or high fuel costs, a low cost index is used. This will result in a slower econ speed. If the time-related costs are high or fuel costs very low, a high cost index would be used. This will result in a faster econ speed. Only your airline can gather the information necessary to determine the best cost index for your operation. Typically, cost index is supplied as part of the dispatch papers or is set by company policy. Let's move on to discuss altitude selection. When we discuss en route climb, we refer to the climb beginning at approximately 1,500 feet, when the airplane has been cleaned up and accelerated, and ending when the airplane reaches its cruising altitude. This is the econ climb speed. If the econ mode is selected, this will be the speed commanded after all waypoint speed constraints, speed restrictions, and transition altitudes have been passed. This speed will provide the minimum trip cost for the initial climb to cruise flight level based on the cost index entered during FMC initialization. High weight or high cost index will result in a higher econ climb speed. As the airplane climbs to higher altitude, the climb speed target switches from a constant indicated airspeed to a constant Mach number. The FMC uses the initial econ cruise Mach number for the final part of climb. This eliminates the need for acceleration or deceleration upon transition from climb to cruise. In case the FMC becomes inoperative, the pilot may use any reasonable climb speed schedule instead. If desired, the pilot may use a standard climb speed schedule. That value is different for every airplane and is a speed schedule selected to yield good fuel efficiency for a typical medium takeoff weight. This standard climb speed schedule may be found in the text portion of the Performance In-Flight PI chapter. The Operations Manual and QRH do not provide any data for climb time, fuel, or distance. Now, at the top of climb, when the airplane achieves its initial cruising altitude, you will need to establish cruise at the target cruise speed. Let's discuss cruise speed for a few minutes. For a given altitude, the fuel efficiency the airplane achieves in cruise depends on the cruise speed, as shown here. Very low speeds are relatively inefficient, as are very high speeds. The fuel mileage depends on airplane weight in this manner. The speed at which the airplane achieves the highest fuel mileage possible is called the maximum range cruise speed. Therefore, maximum range cruise speed is not a constant value. It varies with weight. Now let's define another speed called long range cruise. We will begin with the maximum range cruise speed, which we have already defined. If we look to the scale on the left, we see the fuel mileage at the maximum range cruise speed. Then drop down in fuel mileage by just 1%. Then come back to the right. 
And finally, you will see that we have defined a new speed called long range cruise speed. This speed is typically 10 to 25 knots faster than MRC, with only a 1% loss of fuel mileage. And of course, LRC is also a function of the airplane's weight. With the FMC operative, the speed can be seen on the CDU. Econ speed is the default, but the pilot may select LRC or he may manually enter any other speed he desires. This Econ cruise speed is a function of cost index, gross weight, altitude, and the actual winds. This speed will change during the flight as fuel burns, the wind changes, or a different altitude is selected. Econ Cruise Mach can vary from a low of MRC at a cost index of zero to the VNAV limit speed or cruise thrust limit speed at a high cost index. How about other cruise speeds available through the FMC? The FMC allows the pilot to manually select LRC if desired. The pilot may manually enter any desired airspeed or Mach number into the FMC by keying it into the scratch pad and then selecting it as the target speed. Increasing the Mach number above LRC will significantly increase trip fuel required. In the event the FMC becomes inoperative, the pilot can get the necessary cruise data, thrust setting, Mach number, airspeed, and fuel flow from Chapter PI in the QRH. However, the data is provided only for LRC. If an engine fails during cruise, the new engine out altitude capability will most likely be lower than the current altitude, so it will be necessary to drift down to the new lower altitude. Following an engine failure in cruise, it may be necessary to set the remaining engine to maximum continuous thrust in order to achieve the necessary drift down performance. After setting maximum continuous thrust, the pilot should maintain altitude and allow the airplane to decelerate to the selected drift down speed, at which point the drift down will begin. The optimum drift down speed will yield the best possible drift down path angle and level off altitude. It should be used in cases where staying as high as possible for as long as possible is desirable due to terrain or weather concerns. But the optimum drift down speed is relatively slow. If terrain or weather are not a factor, you may choose to drift down at a faster speed. That will result in a slightly steeper descent path and a lower level off altitude. Maintaining the drift down speed during the descent, the airplane will gradually lose altitude until reaching a new altitude at which the thrust of the remaining engine is adequate to maintain level flight. The actual descent path of the airplane is referred to as the gross drift down flight path. For computing a safe cruise weight, considering obstacle clearance during the drift down in the event of an engine failure, the regulations require us to define a different lower flight path called the net path. For a two-engine airplane, the difference between gross and net drift down gradients is 1.1%. Suppose that your route of flight will take you over some high terrain. In the event of engine failure and drift down, you have to be able to clear all that terrain safely. The regulations require you to consider all terrain within five statute miles either side of your track. After drift down and level off, you must be able to maintain at least 1,000 feet above all obstacles. During the drift down, you must be able to clear all obstacles by at least 2,000 feet.
And finally, when approaching the airport where you intend to land, you must be able to maintain level flight at least 1,500 feet above the airport. If an engine failure occurs in flight, the Engine Out Cruise page may be selected. On some airplanes, this page is advisory only and cannot be executed. This page displays one engine in operative maximum altitude as well as the optimum engine in operative speed to be flown for drift down. If terrain clearance is a potential problem, this engine out drift down speed will be flown. The dispatch requirements for terrain clearance are based on this speed. If an engine failure has been preceded by an FMC failure, the pilot can get the same data from pages in the Performance In-Flight section of the Quick Reference Handbook. For normal descent from your cruise altitude toward the landing, you will want to use a speed schedule selected to minimize either trip cost or fuel consumption. It is also important to begin the descent at the optimum point. Normally, the FMC will compute the optimum top of descent point and will provide the econ descent speed. At the top of descent, the econ descent Mach is set equal to the final econ cruise Mach calculated at the end of cruise. As the airplane descends, the speed will change from Mach number control to indicated airspeed control. This speed will be a function of cost index only. Of course, the pilots may select a different descent speed manually. In the possible absence of FMC assistance, the QRH includes a table of descent time and distance for a specified nominal descent speed schedule. The final topic in this module is holding. In the holding pattern, the goal is to maximize endurance rather than fuel mileage, so the hold will be flown at the speed for minimum fuel flow. Normally, the holding speed and thrust setting are obtained from the FMC. The FMC displays holding data in this manner. In the absence of data from the FMC, Chapter PI in the QRH provides the necessary information.